thank you everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy to be here because I used to be doing everything 10 years ago. So it's great to be back, especially to talk about Brazil with you. So today I'm going to talk about the main opportunities that we have now in Brazil uh, from the oil and gas and going through the renewables. Uh, so initially, I want to give you an overview about the country because I don't know how familiar you, you are, I don't know if any of you have been in Brazil. No? So Brazil is huge, not only uh, on a territorial um, manner, but also we are the largest economy in Latin America. And we also have a, a very huge population. And because of that, Brazil is not only a major energy producer, but we also are a major uh, consumer of energy. So if we look to the numbers uh, currently, we can say that Brazil is already a leader when it comes to energy. We are one of the major uh, oil exporters in the world. We are the second la largest producer and consumer of biofuels. We'll talk about it later. And we also produce and we have our energy matrix really green. So we have hydropower, we have, we have wind electricity. When, when we look to the future, we also have like a lot to develop and we also, we also have a potential, not only under the oil and gas industry, but also renewables. As you may see, we have potential to receive investment, not only for ENP uh, development and oil and gas, but also for wind, renewables, and etc. So, having said that, I want to show you how the sector in Brazil is organized. Currently, we have uh, different regulators. Most of them are under the federal level. We also have a national oil company, which is Petrobras. We also have the EPSA, which is focused on the sea salt reserves. The main IOCs are, are already operating in the country, Shell, Total, Ignor. And currently, we have different independent oil companies. We'll have today Petrobil talking with us, and we have, we have 3 r Petroleum, Origen, and EVA. And the supply chain is really well established in Brazil. We have the main companies already operating in the country. So looking to the legislation that we have in place, we have the Brazilian federal constitution. Uh, Brazil is not a common law country, so we have different legislation, different regulation. And we have the petroleum law, we have the free salt law, and the new gas law. So starting with the oil and gas assets, what we have, how can you enter in the market nowadays uh, in order to explore and produce oil in Brazil? Uh, we have a mixed regulatory regime. We have concession and we have production sharing. Why? <laughs> because of the free salt reserves. The government has changed, has shifted. When uh, they have, Petrobras has discovered the free salt reserves, the government has just decided to change the regimes specifically for those areas to the production sharing regime. So the main difference here is that under the production sharing regime, Petrobras has the right of first refusal to operate the assets. So uh, under the concession regime, all of the companies, they can uh, make their proposals and they, they participate of the bids under the same level of competition, but under the production sharing regime, before the bidding round, Petrobras can say that they have, they will um, be the operators, and if they decide to be the operator of the Pesalt areas, they have at least 30% of participation under the uh, agreements. So, uh, looking to the government takes, the main difference here is that royalties under the production sharing is fixed under 15% and concession it can vary from 5, 5 to 10% depending on the how the, the, the fields are you know good, the producing, they are producing so uh, it depends on that A and P will define and uh, you know the difference between the concession and the production sharing in Brazil is not different and as I said to you uh, 
the PPSA, which is a government company, it, it is also a party under the production sharing regime. It represents the government. Additionally to Petrobras, uh, the uh, PPSA receives the profit oil and sells it to the market. So in the last few years, we had, have, we had a lot of bidding rounds in Brazil. This year, we already had one under the concession regime. And we are going to have one in December under the production sharing regime for three south areas. So the market is really, uh, a lot is going on in Brazil currently. I brought to you this image here. It's easy to see how it has developed on the recent years in 2016. Here, I don't know if you are familiar with, here's the Campos and Santos basins. They are the most important offshore areas in Brazil where the place of reserves are located. And if you look at here in 2016, we didn't have that much aggregated areas, but now uh, in 2021, the difference is, is major. So we can see how the, the company <coughs> has increased their participation in the country, and a lot of money is putting uh, there. Petrobras itself is also focusing on their on its reserves offshore. It's really interesting the movement that the market is, is making in the last few years. Now, looking to the MAs, I don't know if you are familiar with the divestment programs that Petrobras has implemented in the last few years. Petrobras is selling its assets on onshore and shallow water, and it's focusing on the south areas. And because of that, we have seen a lot of new companies in Brazil, new oil and gas companies, Brazilian oil and gas companies, actually. 32 new oil and gas companies were created the last year in order to buy these assets from Petrobras and operate them. And uh, the thing is, well, was that the, we had like 138 M&As last year <laughs> compared with 56 in 2020. So it's a lot, it's a lot. So with that, we have a huge impact on the supply chain, on shore and in shallow water. Petrobras was not making good money on those assets, so it's completely different. The country's movement, the movement is huge. So it's really interesting to see what is going on. And what the government is, is being making, you know, in order to attract the investment for those areas. We have here in Brazil, uh, rules related to local content, uh, companies are obliged to follow and to apply to make investments on local content in Brazil, but because they were not being able to, you know, make the full investments and they were being penalized, fines were applied to, the, to them, the government has made some alterations in the legislation in order to provide waivers, and make adjustments in the percentage of uh, local content. And uh, it was really good. The industry has, you know, some more, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Some help. Do you have, let me go. And it was much better for the market to, to have this new uh, regulation. And uh, because of that, uh, the oil companies are much easily uh, implementing the rules related to local content. And also, we have now regulation related to the commission for the first time ever. We didn't have until 2021 any regulation related to the commission. Last year, uh, it, were, it was published two regulations, actually. One related to technical requirements that company must implement uh, in order to uh, decommission their assets. And on the other hand, we also have a, a requ requirement. Uh, companies that, already, uh, that are already developing their producing fields, they have to grant uh, to a &B, the government, a guarantee. So they have to provide a guarantee to the government for the, the, the same amount of the decommission that they are planning to make. And when they start to make the activities, the, the government can release the amount that were you know, uh, guaranteed or paid or uh, deposited on the account. 
So it's really good, not only for the market, but also for the government. And when we look to the major, the major fields, we have different incentives, mostly because of the Petrobras investment programs. Uh, all, all of those fields are major, so new companies are coming and buying these fields. They need royalties reduction, so the regulator is giving reduction to those uh, things. those companies and we have also different re regulations in Brazil we have a development plan once the field enters into the production uh, stage you have to have a development plan and this development plan is the one that is going to uh, give the life extension to the field